What's up, Snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. And uh, today I have to go into the snake room and Pablo and I are gonna be cleaning some of the big snakes, some of the big boas. And uh, cause we fed yesterday, you know, they usually make, they love to eat and then poop and pee and shed and all the other great stuff they do. So what I figured I would do today is when we look at some of the cool stuff that I have growing up, you know, breeders, stuff that's just about to breed, I'll just show you some cool snakes that I think that are really, really kind of things that I'm, I, I dig and that I'm, uh, I guess you could say, projecting into the future as far as projects go and stuff that we can produce. Uh, I'm just going to give you a little teaser, maybe stuff that you've seen, maybe stuff you haven't seen, but it never gets old. I also want to give a huge shout out to albinoturtles.com, what, what turtles from before. They have some incredible looking paisley clowns. I don't know if you've seen these albino, red, they're not albinos, they're, they're red-eared sliders, but they're called the uh, paisley clowns. And they're just wacky looking. You know, I just said to myself, you know, a couple years ago when I got my bunch of turtles and I said, I'm done with turtles. And then I just bought two Mata Mata baby turtles. Uh, my friend Paul Miller and I picked up from underground. And, and now I'm looking at these Paisley clowns. Oh my, I can't even, I don't even want to know how much they cost. They're so amazing looking. Who would have thought that, that the turtles would have had these crazy morphs and patterns? You know, it's, it's. The reptile world is, is just amazing right now, and uh, there's so much exciting stuff going on, so many projects. I don't know if I'll ever champion myself as a, as, a, as a turtle breeder, but I certainly love to have the stuff that looks amazing just in my collection so I can look at it and play with it and stuff like that. You know, I don't have to, everyone always wants to breed everything. Sometimes you don't have to breed it. If it's just cool, and you just to have it in your collection. Like, you know, I'd like, there's a couple snakes out there that, some corn snakes and some king snakes that I don't necessarily want to breed, but I would love to just have in my collection in a nice display tank because they're so cool. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you guys, it, your collection is completely up to you. Don't let other people influence it. All right, let's go take a look at some of the cool boas I have in my collection. All right, I'm just cleaning uh, baby carpet pythons and I wanted to show you this, this little uh, one. This one's uh, hasn't even gone through its ontogenetic color change yet. And look how light it is. That's caramel. I think it's just caramel. It actually could be, yeah, I don't think it has any anything in it. It's just got too much reds in it. This super is probably caramel. caramel, possible super caramel, yeah, pump. And it's gonna be 66% head for uh, moon glow, which would be a albino azanthic. So the caramel albino azanthic is a moon glow. This is definitely caramel, possible super caramel. Look how light he is. I know if I go in there with my hand to bring him out, he's gonna bite me for sure. I don't care. Worth getting, the, worth getting the shot. Look at this. What a beauty. What a beauty. I can't even imagine what he's going to look like in another six months. And he's eating too, which makes me even much happier. <laughs> Sometimes these carpet pythons don't like to eat. Hey guys. I wanted to, we're doing some boa cleaning. And I wanted to show you this beautiful hypo leopard head albino. That uh, head call albino, that is. Look at how red she is. Look at that belly. We, I saw a slob on uh, some of the boa forums or one of the boa uh, pages was saying, show your boa's belly. Look at that belly. Just goes to show you how, how red leopard really is when you strip away some of the black. You can see this, this girl still has a lot of black in her, but. You know, the hypo gene took away some. If we got super hypo, this snake would be super red. Look at that beautiful head. Look how beautiful that black head, black eyes, black tongue. Really nice looking snake. And I think she's I think she's going to breed this uh, coming season. I think she's got some good size in her. She's been eating well. Uh, I think she's old. How old is she, Papa? Is that a, I doesn't say. I think that's. I think she's a 19. So she should be good to go. She was nice and slow grown. The question is, who do we put to her? That's what we got to think about. But that we got a few months to worry about that. So let's put her back and see what the next snake is that we're cleaning today. All right, another great snake here. This is a Roswell ladder tail, which you can't tell because it's totally black. It's obviously IMG and Motley, and I told you that IMG increasing melanistic gene and Mot and excuse me and Motley together will produce a black snake. 
Um, that's just the way it goes. And she's, what is she? She's 100% head Kal albino and 100% head blood. So she's head for red dragon, as we would say. So imagine an IMG Motley red dragon. Oof. I don't even know what the Russell of Lattertail would do to that, but so guess who's going in with this girl later this year? One of our red dragons, because uh, hopefully, and hopefully, probably may have to up the, the, the feeding schedule of the uh, <laughs> of the red dragon to make sure he's ready to go. She looks, she's got good, you know, size. She's a, a, a 2019, so she's she's going to have the years on her. That's perfect. She's got a lot of mature muscle. We, I would say that in bodybuilding too. She's got muscle maturity. But she does, you can tell, she's thick, she's dense, she's got a good size, she's not gonna like, you know, a litter is not gonna drain the snake and kill her. And I purposely, you know, I, I was thinking last year and I said, I'm not, I'm not breeding this girl because she's so beautiful that I do not want to lose this girl. Look at the belly, even the belly. It looks like an indigo snake, right? I don't know if, it, I don't know if, if, if the lighting is, or the camera's able to capture this, but it, see, look at the luminescence in her, in her black, because she's so jet black. And then look at that belly. It looks like it, like a literally like a colubrid. It's probably the blackest. There, this would you'd say this probably this is the blackest snake I have here, yeah. without a doubt. So hopefully it rolls well with her, and she's going to go into the breeding rotation at the end of this year. And God willing, we make a beautiful litter, or she makes a beautiful litter for us. It's a beautiful baby. Here's another really nice big female bow that I've been growing nice and slowly, putting on some nice size here. This is a Paradigm. That's 100% head sharp albino, 100% bow woman caramel. You mix those two together, they're allelic, and they produce this Paradigm. You can see her eyes have this like, like beige look to them. And she's got this little creamy, creamy look to her body. And she's 100% head blood. So we could definitely make some cool, cool, cool Paradigm blood stuff. We can make some sharp, Blood. If we breed her to a, probably I'll probably have to breed her to a um, one of my uh, fire opals or the just the regular albino, and it has to be sharp, of course. Albino bloods. And we can produce some nice stuff from, from this girl. So she'll probably go into the breeding rotation. I think she's also big enough. She's a 19. Uh, Pablo actually tried to breed his. He has the sister to this this past year. I actually also have a a visual paradigm blood sister to this too. So I kept back two girls. And I think that girl will go next year too. She's pretty big as well. So right now we're gonna put her back and let her be. All right, like I am showing you my favorite big snakes. That were, these are mostly grow up. Some of them are breedable, but this one is gonna need another year or so. This is a fire diamond that's also Central American T positive. It's the Nicaraguan Burke wine. Beautiful looking snake, look at this. I love fire stuff. And I think the fire Central American T positive goes really nice together. The VBI T positive um, looks really good with the fire too, I gotta admit, but they have like a blue eye. Really kind of impressive. And look at all the, look at all the reds in here. It all, it, I mean, you really see a lot. Fire and, and T positive go really well together. I think fire and albino almost they look nice, but not as nice as the t positive because you have more contrast. When this girl eventually is ready to breed, I'm going to breed her too. I have a male uh, Central American t positive also that's also fire. So maybe we'll produce some super fires with some purple eyes and produce more of these beauties. So this is the project. Once again, you put them in the rack, you let them grow, you appreciate them, you keep them as pets, you have fun with them. And then one day it comes and it's time. Our day will come, not this year. All right, guys, I wanted to show you this beautiful female that I've been growing up as since we are cleaning. She is an IMG sharp albino and she's hypo, so she's an IMG sun glow. And if you look at the eye, see that red eye, that intense red eye? I think it's how the IMG is in there. That's typical IMG, they get a really, really saturated uh, red eye and that'll tell you when she was a baby you could really see because she had a lot of pretty amazing looking you know uh, high definition type saddles and stuff like that but you know they a lot of boas get yellow as they get older so you can tell though still here by, by her eye her eye just tells everything about it but she's got some nice size in her she might breed at the end of this year i don't know 
I don't know if I, you know what the sad thing is? I don't think I have enough males to, to breed all these females there. So I have to really, I'm gonna have to be selective. And that's why I'm holding back a lot more males recently. Because, and I've told you this before, they're not ball pythons. You cannot put one male with like three female boas. It just doesn't work, even with two. I, every time I try to do that, I always, I always kind of screw myself and stuff. So I might just hold her back an extra year, which is not a big deal. They usually do better when they have a little bit extra time on them. They'll have a bigger litter. They'll have a healthier litter. They'll recover better. So I'm not in a rush for her, but she's 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 exquisite. She's a, one of my favorite now, as I'd say, because she's just got so much contrast on her. Really nice albino. This might be the last snake we show you for today. This is a beautiful labyrinth. As you know, I love labyrinth. We all love labyrinth. Who doesn't like a labyrinth boa? The super form being the crystal. I'll even show you that in a minute. I have a nice crystal female too. But this uh, this one I got from Jeff Ronnie actually. I was too lazy to make my own. And this is a head sharp hypo labby. So ultimately we're gonna make, hopefully make some sharp albino labbies. That should look really nice. I have to just decide what male I want to breed her with. Will she go this year? I don't know. She's pretty big, but I don't know. I don't, I, what did we say she was? What year was she? Pop? 20. Oh, she's 20? Yeah, she's going to have to wait till next year probably, but that's okay. These labbies are pretty big. The females get really big. So even though she looks big, she's, she doesn't have enough maturity on her. She won't be ready this year. I'll, I'll wait till next year. Um, but like I said, you know, you can get you can get fooled because you look at her and then you see one of my dwarf boas that's five years old and she's bigger. And you're like, oh, she must be ready to breed, but she's really not. And so you'll ultimately you'll probably get a, a litter of slugs or who knows. Sometimes you can get lucky, but then I find that a lot of times they don't breed for two years after that. And so, well, I'm in no rush. I don't really have enough males anyway. So probably by the fall, not this year, but the next year, I'll have the right male for her and we'll produce some really cool snakes. But she's she's gorgeous. All right, last boa for today. My crystal was in shed, so I don't want to show her. But this is a hypo IMG, which has got one of the coolest patterns in contrast. Look at that head, and we love that head, Pablo and I, because it's, it's it's got black on it, but it's not all black, you know. And the hypo gene will prevent that from happening. So this snake will never be all black, but it's been getting darker and darker. And it's also head BPIT positive. So I'm thinking about using him to breed with that fire um, head BPIT positive that we have. Because I think that might be a nice, a nice mix. And we'll think about that as the season progresses. But this, this boy looks like he's, he's probably ready to breed. So I'm pretty happy about that. I'm pretty happy about the way he looks too. He's really cool looking. Uh, once again, sometimes, you know, a, a, a jet black snake is cool. But when you have a couple of them, what do you, you know, they all look the same. But this guy has got character, as they say, right? An actor, he's a character actor. He's got no snake, no other snake looks exactly like this with the same pattern. And that's what the IMG gene does with Hypo. You get some really, he does that with VPI T positive too, all the T positive lines. You that get face. a lot of contrast. Yeah, the face is just crazy. And that's what it's about, making different stuff stuff that is artistic all right guys that's gonna do it for today here at palumbo's pythons and boas and i hope you enjoyed uh this is a quick kind of quick hit we were doing a lot of cleaning today and you know what you would think that i would take a ton of pictures and videos when i was when i'm cleaning but when i get into cleaning and start like analyzing stuff and thinking oh i can breathe this with that i i completely forget to pick the phone up and or use my camera and film stuff i just i get too excited i forget and then i'm like oh man i should have film this uh i i made one of the cardinal rules of no-nos i had uh, a male and female boa together that i was you know trying to breed and i was gonna i was feeding yesterday and i decided to feed them both together in the same enclosure and i put them on separate sides and i fed them each a rat and pablo and i went back you know looking to see who ate and didn't eat and the female had swallowed the male or was in the process of swallowing the male luckily we pulled the male out and he's fine but it could have been a disaster. And that's because I didn't listen to my own advice that I give there when you don't feed two snakes at the same time in the same enclosure. Because what happens is the, the, the big boa, the females, they eat theirs and then they go and they want to eat the other one too. And this way, and if the male's not done, they'll just eat the they'll, they'll eat whatever's left of the rat that's sticking out of the male's mouth and they'll eat the male. That's the problem. So don't do that. I learned the hard way.
And I'm not afraid to admit when I make mistakes because you know what, we all make mistakes. And we think, ah, I got a hold of this. There's no big deal. I've done it a million times. Don't do it. it happened to Pablo too. He admitted to me. And, and I yelled at him. I'm like, what are you feeding snakes in the same enclosure for? And then I went and did it myself. So we're all, we all make uh, silly, silly error uh, judgment calls. Don't feed snakes in the same enclosure. All right. Having said that, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Tomorrow, we're going to be looking into the incubator. I think we have some eggs hatching. For now, though, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on your notifications. Hit that like button. I'll see you back tomorrow morning.